Hello, my name is Caitlin Vaughn, and I am a physician assistant at KMC Dermatology in Emporia, Kansas. Today I'm talking about actinic keratoses. Actinic keratoses, or AKs for short, are typically red scaly skin lesions found in adults with fair skin. People with chronic sun exposure are at higher risk for developing these lesions. These lesions are usually found on sun-exposed areas such as the scalp, face, neck, forearms, and lower legs. AKs can occasionally progress to squamous cell carcinoma. People with fair skin are most likely to develop AKs. Those who have had chronic sun exposure, such as those with outdoor occupations, are at increased risk. A history of sunburn also increases the risk for AKs, even a single sunburn in childhood. Sex, age, and geographic location influence the risk as well. Men are more likely than women to develop these lesions, and the prevalence of AKs increases with age. Genetic disorders that interfere with DNA repair after exposure to ultraviolet radiation and those who are immunosuppressed, such as organ transplant recipients, are at increased risk for AKs. AKs typically develop as one or multiple lesions on highly sun-exposed areas. AKs are not usually symptomatic, but can be. The classic form of an AK presents as a red, scaly, flat, or raised lesion, anywhere from a few millimeters to more than a centimeter in size. Occasionally, AKs have thick scale, no scale, and are smooth, or have a horn-like projection. Pigmented AKs can be brown. Persistent rough scaly areas on the lips are known as actinic chylitis, equivalent to AKs of the skin. It can involve a portion of the lip or the entire lip. One may develop fissures or ulcerations as well. AKs have potential to progress to squamous cell carcinoma, but the likelihood is low. Lesions that do not progress to squamous cell carcinoma may regress or stay AKs. An individual that has AKs tells us that the person has had chronic sun damage and is at increased risk for developing basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. AKs are usually diagnosed through a combination of touch and visual inspection. Biopsy of a lesion can be performed if the diagnosis is uncertain or to distinguish between an AK and a squamous cell carcinoma. Dermoscopy using a handheld tool that combines magnification and light may be used. Liquid nitrogen cryotherapy is the first line therapy used for patients with one or a few isolated AKs. It can be performed quickly in the office, does not require local anesthesia, is inexpensive and is well tolerated by patients, and in most cases results in good or excellent cosmetic outcome. Shave excision and curatage followed by electrodesiccation or cryotherapy are frequently used for AKs, particularly hyperkeratotic or thick lesions. A specimen can be sent to histopathology to exclude squamous cell carcinoma. For patients with multiple lesions, our first-line therapies include topical fluorouracil and photodynamic therapy. Topical fluorouracil is applied by the patient once or twice daily for two to four weeks, depending on the extent and location of the lesions. This causes cell death of the AK lesions while also producing redness, blistering, erosion, and inflammation of the skin. The skin heals two to four weeks after stopping use of the fluorouracil. Photodynamic therapy consists of topical application of a photosensitizer agent in the dermatology office, followed by exposure to a visible wavelength light source. After PDT, the treated areas are red similar to a sunburn and one may experience tingling or burning, swelling, small vesicles, or crusting. The skin usually peels following the inflammation. The most common complaint during PDT is burning or stinging during the light treatment. 
Alternative therapies for patients with multiple AKs who respond poorly or cannot tolerate the adverse effects of first-line therapies include topical amiquimod, topical enginal mebutate, topical diclofenac, and combination therapies. Other therapies include topical retinoids, chemical peels, laser resurfacing, and dermabrasion. Sun avoidance, especially during peak hours in the spring and summer, use of protective clothing, and regular use of broad-spectrum sunscreens are of key importance for preventing actinic keratoses. Sunscreen has been proven to reduce the development of AKs in several randomized trials. Regular skin checks and monitoring for actinic keratoses and skin cancer are required in all patients with a history of AKs. Thank you.